Hey everybody, um, so today we're going to talk about um, a little bit about Mashiach. Um, there's a lot of uh, people, you know, have all sorts of ideas of who he is, what's he going to do, all that kind of stuff. So we're just going to read straight from the Rambam and trying to get a better idea of what's going on. Okay, um, so I'll just read it in English and I'll elaborate. You guys can ask any questions on the way out. Okay. Uh, in the future, the Messianic king, okay, will arise and renew the Davidic dynasty, okay? Messianic is the word for Mashiach in English, okay? We said Mashiach before, is a person who's anointed with oil. The kings of Israel, um, they would take oil and, you know, rub it on their head, and that's called Mashiach, and in English it's called Messianic, okay? So it will be a king, okay, and renew the Davidic dynasty, Right, Israel was split into two. Right, there was there was Yehuda and Israel. Right, there were the kings of Judah, right from the Davidic lineage, and the kings of Israel. Right, maybe not from the Davidic dynasty. Okay, restoring its initial sovereignty, he will build the temple and gather the dispersed of Israel. Okay, so he has to build the temple, and he has to gather all the Jews to Israel. Okay, then in his days, the observance of all the statutes will return to their previous state. Okay, wow. everybody will keep all the Torah. We will offer sacrifices. Okay, there will be a temple. Observe the sabbatical I and mean, jubilee years, right? The Shemitah every seven years and um, uh, Yovel, Yovel, right? The Shnata Yovel is, is the 50th year. Okay, where the land, nobody does any work in the land. Um, according to all the particulars described in the Torah, right? The halachot of the Torah. Now, anyone who does not believe in him, right? Or does not await his coming, okay? So you have to believe in him and you have to wait for him to come. Denies not only the statements of the other prophets, but also the statements of Moshe, our teacher. Okay, Moshe Rabbeinu. Okay, and and we have we have uh, different uh, verses to teach us. If you look at the, the the pages we have, different verses. All right, as the Torah says, God will bring back your captivity and have mercy upon you. He will again gather you from among the nations, even if your diaspora is at the ends of the heavens. God will gather you up from there and bring you to the land. Okay. Um. These, these explicit words of the Torah include all the statements made by all the prophets. Okay, so it's not just in the Torah, it's um, in, the, in the, the rest of Tanakh. All right, Tanakh is Torah, Nevim, Ketuvim. Right? right, so in other places in the Torah, not just in the five books of Moses, there's also um, verses that allude to this. Okay, um, we'll skip to number three. Okay, one should not presume that the Messianic king must work miracles and wonders. Okay, there was um, a person in Europe called Shabtai Tzvi. Okay, this man uh, pretended to be Mashiach. And people believed him because he did all sorts of miracles, all sorts of wonders. Okay, and people were so enthralled and were, you know, wowed by him that they went after him and, you know, they made big, very big mistakes. Okay, because he was the, he turned out to be false at the end. Yeah, he turned out to be so false. So how do we know the Mashiach is going to be him? We're, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that exactly. How you're gonna find out? Okay, so he's not gonna work uh, miracles. He's not gonna do any wonders. Okay, so don't go to any rabbis that claim to do this, and don't think that that's what the Mashiach is gonna do. Okay, or bringing about a new phenomenon in the world. <clears throat> but obviously, okay? something big has to happen for for everybody to come together from the whole world. It's fine, right? It's fine. Yeah, something big could happen, but he's not going to do any miracles or wonders. That's not the sign of that's who's Mashiach, okay? And it's not going to be um, something strange in the world, like people are going to start walking on their heads. No. They weren't walking on their heads, now they're walking on their heads. Oh, this must be the signs of the time, okay? No, don't think like that, okay? Don't worry, we're going to talk about everything, okay? Um, he's not going to resurrect the dead. 
Please not. I oh, know. Okay. Or perform other similar deeds. This is definitely not true. Okay. So anybody speaks to this, What's don't the trust them. We're going to talk about that later, but okay. He's not going to be the one doing oh, it. God not. does everything. Okay. okay? So don't put your faith in man, put your faith in God, right? That's, that's the whole idea of everything, okay? Proof can be brought from the fact that Rabbi Akiva, one of the greater sages of the Mishnah, right, was one of the supporters of King Bar Koziva and would describe him as the Messianic king. He and all the sages of the generation considered him to be the Messianic king until he was killed because of his sins. Once he was killed, they realized that he was not Mashiach. The sages didn't ask him for any signs or wonders. Okay? You're not supposed to ask Mashiach, show me a sign that you... The Mashiach. Exactly. Oh, okay? The Mashiach is going to know he's the Mashiach. <laughs> <laughs> okay? The main thrust of the matter is this Torah and its statutes and its laws are everlasting. We may not add to them or detract from them. Okay? That's the main idea. The Mashiach can't say, oh, now, that's it. No more... Uh, no more keeping the Torah. You guys are free. Okay? It's going to be oh, yeah. a kid that's born from a mother, right? He's exactly. going to be, you know, grow up and... Okay. Sorry, that's but if, that's the definition the of the, the Davidic the, the, dynasty. If the Rabbanim said that everybody has to go to the Tshuva and all that, it's fine. To get the Geulah, my Lord. They can say okay. that, sure. Okay, sure. that's okay. Sure. That's what they say, basically. Lucky yeah, but they if, don't know when they can, they're going to come, but he said... It's, it's, even if it's unclosed, everybody needs to bring the Geula, which means that everybody needs to do a lot of mitzvot, a lot of chazara betshuva. That's what they say. That yeah. I, I, I want to know that we're in the same path. Yeah. Okay. It's all about the Torah mitzvot. We're going to see later. Okay. If a king will arise from the house of David, who will diligently contemplate the Torah and observe its mitzvot, okay, as described in the written law and the oral law, okay, as David, his ancestor, and he will compel all Israel to walk in the way of Torah, right? There's no more being secular. There's no more, I do what I want. There's no more, this religion is not for me. The Mashiach will cause, he will force everybody to keep the Torah, okay? Um, so any, anybody who's lenient and says, you can do this, it's fine. You can do, do that, it's show. fine. Don't worry about that. Don't trust that person, okay? And rectify the breaches in its observance and fight the wars of God. We may with assurance consider him Mashiach, okay? If he succeeds in the above, builds the temple in its place and gathers the dispersed of Israel, he is definitely the Mashiach. Okay. okay, so the Jews have to come back to Israel. Yeah. Everybody has to keep the Torah. He's okay, he has to go to wars. He has to fight the wars of Hashem, of God, right? And he has to build the temple. Hmm. If he did all this, then he's for sure Mashiach. Now, how long all this going to take? I don't know. Huh? Huh? He's going to be born no, in Israel? you can ask, you can ask. But we'll, we'll see, we're going to see. Okay. <laughs> he will then improve the entire world, motivating all the nations to serve God together. Okay? So everybody's going to serve God. So if you see people not serving God, obviously he didn't come yet. Right? Uh -huh. If you see the Jews not keeping the commandments, obviously he didn't come yet. Can you confront them? Mm. Can you confront people when they say something that is against the That's what? What do you mean, you can you like let's say if somebody, uh, I, I had somebody that uh, her son is going out with a Chinese girl and I'm like and she said it's a done deal and I'm like no it's not a done no it's not a done deal <laughs> and she's like I'm asking him I'm asking him if it's if it's okay to confront them. Well, we were talking. Oh, not, not not right, we were talking about she this. So we were talking about this earlier. Okay, it, it, if a person like you can come to me and say, "Hey, you, um, Rabbi, you, you, you know, you're being angry." The Torah says you're not allowed to be angry. Okay, that's like you're rebuking me. Okay, because I care about keeping the Torah mitzvot, so I'll listen to you. Or you say, "Hey, Rabbi, you spoke lashonara." Okay, then that I can, because I want to fix myself. Okay. But people who don't have a life of Torah and mitzvot, 
they don't care what you're going to tell they them. Can, you can, you're blue in the face minus. and tell them, it, 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 you could you could be blue in the face and tell them, hey, you know, that's not good. Hey, you know, that's not good. But they themselves, they don't, they don't live that life. You can try. You can try. You can try. Okay, listen, guys, guys, you can, you can try and do whatever you want. Okay, but. You know, don't get upset because think about it. They're, they don't live your life. No. Mm -hmm. They don't care about the things you care about. Mm -hmm. Okay? Their religion is to be happy. Exactly. Okay? Their religion is not to be with God. Okay? Right. And for them to be happy is to be happy, whatever it takes. But today, I heard something about Moshe Rabbeinu. When Hashem told him to go to Eretz Israel and they, to, to go to Bnei Israel and talk to them, that they're going to do to Teshuvah, he said they're not going to listen to him. So Hashem was upset on him that he took a spirit like on the Ibn Israel. Now I'm thinking, maybe if I say something, maybe it's something in the Jewish person going to move something. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, we can't say they're not going to listen to us because maybe somebody, something going to wake up when you say something like yeah. that. Maybe. 100%. So in the same time, when they say we're not going to listen to you, he's like, you're talking Lashon Ara about somebody that maybe needs the Chizuk. Maybe he needs something to hear. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe. You could try. I'm not sure. I'm not the Navi. Okay. Huh? Find another book. And the other one. Alright, guys, guys. Guys, <laughs> stop it. Okay. Uh, as it says, right? I will transform all peoples to a pure language, and they will call upon the name of God and serve Him with one purpose. Okay? So the whole world is going to serve God. That's where we're going to. Okay? If he did not succeed to this degree, or was killed, he is surely not the Redeemer promised by the Torah. Okay? This puts aside all the questions of anybody yeah. who was dead. Anybody who's not here is not Mashiach. Oh. Okay? So it's not Mashiach. Rather, he should be considered as all the other proper, okay, and complete kings of the Davidic dynasty who died. Okay? God caused him to arise only to test the many. It's a test. Okay? Anybody who seems to have all these things and he dies and everybody still believes he's that the is, one. Like the God is testing them and they're failing the test. Okay? Yeah. And some of the wise men will stumble to try them, to refine and to clarify until the appointed time. Because the set time is in the future. Okay? So time is not now. This is, you know, the person of uh, from Nazareth, okay? Who people thought he was a Mashiach, <laughs> yeah, and he was executed, and he was killed, okay? Now think about it. Is there any other, a big stumbling block? The, well, their whole religion... Him when he was Jewish, and they're, they're it, good. It doesn't matter, because if this doesn't happen, the whole world is not serving God. If they don't keep the commandments, if they're teaching people you don't need to keep the commandments, this is not what Mashiach is supposed to do. Uh -huh. So you obviously see they're wrong, as good as someone could be in the world. If he's not doing this, he's not causing the whole world to serve God according to the way God said, not according to the way people said, not any man-made religion, okay? Then he's a false, he's a false Messiah, okay? Right? All the prophets spoke of Mashiach as the Redeemer of Israel and their Savior, who will gather their dispersed. Okay? We're still in exile, right? We're still, we're at the time of this recording, we're in America. Right? So obviously he wasn't the Mashiach. Right? No. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you look at the next page, it says, How will this come about? The entire world has already become filled with mention of Mashiach, Torah, and Mitzvot. These matters have been spread the foremost islands to many stubborn-hearted nations. Okay? They discuss these matters and the Mitzvot of Torah, saying these Mitzvot were true, but already negated in the present age and are not applicable for all time. Okay? These people, these other religions, don't want to keep them mitzvot. 
So obviously they cannot be, right, the redeemers of Israel. Okay? Um, when the true messianic king will arise and prove successful, his position becoming exalted and uplifted, they will all return and realize that their ancestors endowed them with a false heritage. And their prophets and ancestors caused them to err. Okay? So all the other religions are causing them to err. To, to, to make a mistake. Okay? Make a mistake. Okay? So that was chapter 11. Now we're going to go on to chapter 12. Okay? Oh I'm not Mommy, enjoy yourself. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Do not presume that the messianic age, any facet of the world's nature will change, or there will be innovations in the work of creation. Rather, the world will continue according to its pattern. Okay? And here you have different verses in the Torah that teach you this. I'm not going to read them, but... Okay, the world... Olam kimina gonoik, right? The world is going to carry on as we are. We're still going to have one nose, one mouth, two ears, right? Really? We're still going to need to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, person's third eye, right? No, no. The world is going to be the same thing, okay? Um, in the me Messianic era, everyone will realize which matters were implied by these metaphors and which illusions they contain. Some places in the Torah, it says different... Uh, things um and and when when they come to fruition you'll understand what they implied like the lion will eat straw like an ox all these things they're illusions but we don't know exactly what what it means right now we will when when the mashiach comes and everything unfolds okay mm -hmm. now our sages taught there will be no difference between the current age and the messianic era except the emancipation from our subjugation to the Gentile kingdoms. Okay, what does that mean? The world is going to be the same, except the Jewish people will no longer have to be subject to the Goyim, the nations of the world. Okay, how do we know right now we're not in Mashiach's time? Because even in the state of Israel, they st we still listen to the nations of the world. We're not free to do what we want, in our, even in our own land. Okay? <laughs> it's so good. What is it? It's delicious. It? Oh, oh, goodness. I'm not editing this, guys. <laughs> we need to make a fancy in the Parnassah Bezrat Hashem. It's so good. It's delicious. Okay. The simple interpretations of the Prophet's words appear to imply that the war of Gog and Magog will take place at the beginning of the Messianic Age. Okay, there's going to be a war, Gog and Magog. What's the war of Gog and Magog? Is all the nations of the world will come against Israel. And on that day, God will, you know, destroy the nations of the world. And he'll show that he's the only one that was ruling of all time. Okay, so obviously this didn't happen yet. Okay, it's going to be the whole world, not one nation. Okay? Before the war of Gog and Magog, a prophet will arise to inspire Israel to be upright and prepare their hearts. Okay? As it, say, it states, Behold, I am sending you Elijah. Okay? Eliyahu Navi. That's what's going to happen. Okay? He will not declare the pure impure or the impure pure. He will not dispute the lineage Okay, um, of those presumed to be of pedigree, nor will he validate the pedigree of those whose lineage is presumed blemished. Okay, but he will just help turn people's hearts towards God. Okay, so before that, there's going to be a prophet, Eliyahu is going to come and bring all of Israel, all the Jews, towards God. Like Ninveh, like Yonav, because yeah, something like that. <laughs> there are some sages who say the. Elijah's coming will precede the coming of the Mashiach. Okay, will come before. All these matters, okay, and similar matters cannot definitely known by man until they occur. For these matters are undefined in the prophet's words, and even the wise men have no established tradition 
regarding these matters, except their own interpretations of the verses, okay? How exactly it's going to happen, when the prophet's going to come, when the war is going to be, when the Mashiach is going to come, all these things, nobody knows. So anybody who's claiming to say this, tell them, thank you very much, I'm not interested. Okay? But it could be that Hashem, Hashem is going to hide him like he did with uh, David. That they, right? He's not going to show everybody. They're not going to know. We're not going to know exactly that he's the Mashiach. I think the no, if he does all these know. things, you're going to know he's, he's the, the Mashiach. Mashiach. But what about with David the Melech? It's very, it doesn't matter. Really? These, this is the tradition. Huh? God said, guys, God said, the, this, if he does X, Y, and Z, he's Mashiach. Don't confuse yourself. Don't get crazy thoughts into your head. If you see these things happening, you can say, wow, there's the Mashiach. Until these things don't happen, you can't say it about anybody. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. No hiding, no seeing, no this. These are the signs. You see this, he is. Okay, you so don't see this, he's not. Okay, what it doesn't, David, then? It doesn't matter. Nah, it, was Mashiach, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. Don't confuse yourself with these things. Oh, it's that rabbi. Oh, it's no, that no, guy no, no, over no. there. He's just hiding. God's just hiding. It's him. It's him. But he's hiding him. <laughs> no. Well, why would a person you want to confuse what I'm himself? You don't understand what I'm saying. You don't understand exactly. what I'm saying. Exactly. Okay. Now. Right. Therefore, there's controversy among these matters. Okay. Regardless of the debate concerning these questions, neither the order of the occurrence of these events or their precise detail are among the fundamental principles of faith. Okay? Exactly how it's going to be. Okay? What's going to happen has nothing to do with what we believe. Okay? All these details are not going to help you believe in God more. A person should not occupy himself with the Agadot, and the homolytics concerning these matter, these and similar matters, you calculate, yeah, it happened this, we're close to the, the end of the <clears> 6,000 <throat> years, it must be now, it should have been two years ago, it should have been, none of that, right? Nor should you consider them as essentials, for study of them will, not, will neither bring fear or love of God. Okay? Whether you know exactly what's going to happen, what time it's going to happen, who's going to do it. Okay, these are not things that draw you closer to God. And the whole purpose is to do the mitzvot. The whole purpose is to draw down light, fix the world, go to the next world and get your reward. All right? This is, these things are not consequential to you serving God. Okay? But it's, it's, it's the history of the world is going to br bring this going forward. Okay? Similarly, one should not try to determine the appointed time for Mashiach's coming. Our sages declared, may the spirits of those who attempt to determine the time of Mashiach coming expire. Right? People who calculate when exactly is going to come, when he's not going to come, all these things, the sages curse those people. Wow. So if you hear those people saying, oh, it must be time, we're close, all that, stay away from that. Okay? Rather, one should await and believe in the general conception of the matter as explained. Wait, and okay, I'm waiting for what? What am I waiting? I'm waiting for somebody to come and inspire the Jewish people to serve God and to inspire the whole world to serve God. Gather the Jews to Israel, build a temple, and bring the whole world towards God, towards the end of the 6,000. The That's what I'm waiting who's gonna for. Who's going to build a temple? Huh? Gonna be well, right, we, we, what we just said is, is, is Mashiach. We're not going to get into the details, no, but, but... Is it people? Is it like magic? As far, as far as the Rambam says, it's going to be people. Okay? We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay? There's many other places that say that God's going to send the temple from, from heaven. Yeah. But is it it's, built, it can, built from you have to understand. Seat? You have to understand. The whatever world. whatever is said, everything's true. So if everything's true, you have to be, your mind has to be able to be expansive enough to know how both could be true. I heard it's going to be built from the bottom of the sea. <laughs> Don't worry about it, okay? It has to be both are true. God's going to build it and man's going to build it together at the same time. That's all you need to know. Don't worry about it, okay? It's not a movie. There's a point to history. It's not like, oh, let me watch the movie and how it's going to unfold. And 
you know, if I have the script in my hand and that kind of stuff, and I want to imagine it, I want to see it. No, just serve God. You do what you can to bring down the light and bring and bring this this about. Okay. During the era of the Messianic King, okay, once his kingdom has been established and all of Israel has gathered around him, the entire nation's line of descent will be established on the basis of his words and the and and the prophetic prophetic spirit which will rest upon him, okay? He shall sit as a refiner and purifier. He will purify the lineage of the Levites first, okay? All the Levi'im. He's going to say who's the Levi and who's not a Levi, okay? Stating he is a priest of defined lineage. He is a Levi of defined lineage, right? He's going to say this guy's a Kohen, this guy's a Levi, okay? Those whose lineage he will not recognize will be lowered to the status of Israelites. Okay, right? There's Kohanim, Levim, and Israelim. So the Mashiach is going to say who really is what. Because the tradition is, what we have is what we have, but it's not clear exactly, for sure. Okay? Why, why do we need to know this? Because we need to know who's going to serve in the temple. Right? Kohanim have certain mitzvot, Levim have certain mitzvot, Israelim have certain mitzvot. Right? And we need to know who's who. Don't worry about this, okay? When he defines the lineage of the Israelites, he will make known their tribal lineage alone. Okay, stating he is from this tribe and he is from another tribe. Remember? No. Am Israel has 12 tribes. Yes, I don't right? know which one I am from. Okay, well, the Mashiach will tell you. <laughs> Okay, he will not by contract state concerning a person who is presumed to be of unblemished lineage, he is illegitimate or he's a slave. Right? For the law is once a family has become intermingled with the entire Jewish people, they remain intermingled. Okay, he's not going to say this guy was never a Jew, this guy was a Jew. He's not going to do that. He's just going to say, You're from the tribe of Dan, you're from the tribe of Menashe everybody where they need to go, okay? Because Am Yisrael, the Jews, are supposed to serve God in their 12 tribes, okay? Each one so has a you, special special work that they have to do. So if you convert? So you'll be, you'll be placed somewhere in, in, uh, in the category where you need to, whatever whatever Whether work you, you need to do. No. It doesn't matter. No. Like, you, have to, you have to be placed wherever um, you have to do your fixing. He'll know exactly what you need to do to fix your soul, to fix the world, to wow. all that, okay? I think uh, we have two more, okay? The sages and the prophets did not yearn for the messianic area, era in order to have dominion over the entire world, to rule over the Gentiles, to be exalted nations, or to eat, drink, and celebrate, okay? It's not party time. No. Okay? People think, oh, he's going to come and everything will be good and we're going to just be fine and everything is going to be good times in the world. No. Rather, they desire to be free to involve themselves in Torah and wisdom without any pressures or disturbances, right? No need to go to work. No need to worry about um, the nation's taxes, the Can't things, all that down, stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, but how long this whole process is going to be? Could be many years. Yeah. We don't know. Nobody knows. So, what do you mean you don't need to go to work? So, how do you survive? We're gonna survive. see. We're gonna see what we're gonna see what happens. Okay, but they didn't yearn for this time so we can, you know, go to the beach, mm. and they didn't. The sages did not yearn for this time. They didn't want this time to come so we can have it easy in the world, so we can just go and relax on the beach, go and play basketball, go chill on vacations. Okay, mm. this is not the purpose of the Mashiach coming. Okay. Well, then that's not right. fun. <laughs> <laughs> right? Rather, they desire to be free to involve themselves in Torah and wisdom without any pressures or disturbances. So they would merit, right? Merit the what? The world to come. What's the whole purpose? Why we're we doing everything? To get over there, to go get the reward over so there. So we still have another chance. Exactly. After to make us better, like let's say people that are against. Torah and all that. They there start. won't be anybody against Torah in that time. Yes. Yeah, so no have matter to be, what you do you, you now, have, you're still going to make you, it up. You have to be a dog on the level of a dog to not be into Torah at that time. So there's that hope time, for everyone. Of course there's hope for everyone. To come back. Yes. 
So I can kulam yachzeru yavo Mashiach. So, no, no, no. So that guy no. should be... Mashiach will... Guys, get this clear. Mashiach will gather everybody to serve God. Okay? He will do it. Exactly. He will... No, you're not allowed to be bad now. Okay? <laughs> no one is saying this. Okay? <laughs> No, but she, she, she meant it's okay for the one who are bad now. No, it's not okay for anybody to be bad. They're going to get punished for it, okay? They're going to get, everybody's going to get what they deserve. No, but if they come, what? they all come to the same point at one point after Mashiach come, will they be judged differently than the other one? Everybody, it's a general principle. Everybody's judged according to their soul. Everybody's soul is different from everybody else in the world. We can go through it in, in this book, in the Hashem, but everybody's soul is different from everybody else's in the world. And everybody's soul is judged for their particular mission in the world. So you can't learn from one person to the next. Okay? All right, one more. Okay, in that era, there will be neither famine or war. Okay? No people going hungry. Nobody fighting. Okay? You see wars, this isn't happening yet. Envy or competition, okay, for good will flow in abundance and all the delights will be freely available as dust. All the sushi in the world, all the cakes, everything will be like dust, okay? And then okay? the world's going to be destroyed. What's going to happen with the going? Relax. We're going to get to that, okay? What the idea is... Everything is going to be abundant. You're going to have everything in the world. You're not going to be worried about this stuff, right? Right now, people are worried about getting enough money and getting, not just enough money, getting extra money to build houses and have bank accounts and have all this stuff and, you know, eat luxuries and go on vacations and all that stuff. Old, that stuff is all going to be, that stuff is all going to be like the dust, okay, in the world. Yes. The occupation of the entire world will be solely to know God. Does that include the goyim? Yes. The, I'll read it again. The occupation of the entire world will be solely to know God. Will that include the goyim? Muslims, goyim. Will that include the goyim? Yes. Okay. Right. So everybody, that's their sole purpose in the world, to know God. Remember, we said, if you look at the earlier, um, the earlier classes, that everybody in the world swore that they were going to serve God, right? Yeah. And that's what their little indentation here is from, right? If you guys remember, mm -hmm. if not, if you don't remember, go listen to the previous uh, classes, okay? Because our knowledge is building, right? It's building like on top of what we said earlier. So if you never learned what we said earlier, mm -hmm. you can't just jump in. Many classes tell you a lot of information, but the information is scattered all over. If you have scattered information, you don't know how to bring it all together. Okay, knowledge has to be stuff that's built on top, layered, so you can actually build a building of knowledge. Okay? Yeah. Therefore, the Jews will be great sages and know the hidden matters. Okay? All the secrets of the Torah, the Kabbalah, everything that stuff. Grasping the knowledge of their creator according to the full extent of human potential. Okay? Right now we know God, but we're going to know him much more. Okay? And we will be the sages of the world. The world will come to us and ask us how to how to serve God. Okay? So that's what Mashiach is going to do. We said in last week's uh, yeah. class that, that, that the redemption is Mashiach bringing the whole world to completion towards the 6,000. And at the end of the 6,000, we're going to transition over into the next world. Right? I had a rabbi, every time a phone would ring, he said, thank God I'm alive, thank God I could hear. <laughs> okay? So, uh, that's uh, a shout out to Rabbi Pliskin. Okay? Uh, from Jerusalem. Uh, okay? So, instead of like yelling at the students, you know, shut off your phone, what are you doing? You know, he took it to like a positive way. Okay? <clears throat> now, any questions? Uh, yeah, so after all that, yeah. then the world is going to be destroyed? Yes. Why? If we get, got so close to... 
So the world, guys, remember, <laughs> from 6,000 to 7,000, the world gets destroyed. Why? Because just as man sinned, this is, this is we're going to get to this right now. When, when a person sins, he thinks nothing happened, right? I'll get punished, I won't get punished. He doesn't understand that in everything he drew down darkness. He sinned, he drew down darkness on his clothes. He drew down darkness on books, on the shelves, the, ho the ground, the fruits, the drinks, the water, he, everything, okay? Everything in the world, the fish, the, the animals, okay? Sin draws darkness onto the world. Because there is sin, what happens is just like man must die, okay, and the soul must leave the body, and 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 the body has to go down, dis disintegrate in the ground, right, and be renewed, okay, meaning like we have to get the impurities out of the body, right. That that was when Adam sinned, God said you must die now. What does it mean to die? It means the soul separates from the body. The body goes into the ground, gets purified by disintegrating, by getting destroyed. It gets the impurities that were into the, the body. The, right. The, when, when the soul sinned, right? When the body and the soul sinned, the impurities came into the body. Okay. They came into the soul too. So when, at death, the death, the, the, the two separate, the body goes down to the ground and breaks apart and becomes pure again, okay? The evil leaves it, okay? The soul also has to go to a place and to be purified, okay? Does it, it see may, it its may, body? Yeah. It sees? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Not, not, not every piece of the soul leaves the body, okay? The, bi the body has, remember we said there's five parts of the soul, okay? The five parts of the soul... Um, a little piece, a little spark of the last part of it, the last part, it remains in the body. So everything that happens to the body, the body, the soul feels. Okay? People don't know this, but when they pass away from the earth and they go down, down to the ground and they're by themselves down in the grave, okay, they get, uh, they feel the hurt of, um, it's called chibuta oh, kever. If they, if they enjoyed too much of this world, so um, there's angels. They, they did enjoy and they'll be okay. Yes, they, there's angels that there, there's angels that come and and beat the 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 enjoyment out of them. Okay. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know people don't like to talk about it, but that's what happens. Yeah. Scary. What are you gonna do? If you enjoy too much of this life, you're gonna get a nice beating down there. Especially like me because I'm fat. Especially when I'm fat. So let me let, let me explain what, what does it mean what does it mean to enjoy too much? Okay. Doing sins, no, make it lot. Lot. No, 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 no. This is this is beyond sins. Okay? okay. So this is talking about like um, let's say you finished eating, right? You 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 filled up what you need to fill up. Not too much, not too little. You're satisfied. Now you're saying, oh, wow, that looks really good. I want more. For everything you taste, and you, and it could be the most kosher food in the world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> exactly. That's why he doesn't eat. Exactly. Yeah, this, is, this is why he doesn't eat. Yeah. yeah. But you yes. have grandparents, they used no, but to you have to eat dinner. We didn't eat dinner. But guess what? They didn't know what we know. <laughs> no, they knew. They knew. Like, you know, the very moment okay. they met, yeah, I'm serious. They, they didn't eat a lot, yeah. Wait, wait, were, you are you talking only food? Yeah. Well, yeah. obviously, not, not, not just food, okay? But, but food is the classic example, okay? Because it's so easy, we do it all the time, okay? But once you eat extra because, you know, your, 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 your yeah. bodily instincts want that extra, That's yet that has to leave your body. Okay, and when does it leave? It leaves in the ground. Okay, now, uh, when is the safe spot to do it? When can you eat that extra on Shabbat and on the Yamin Tovim on the on on the holidays? Okay, that time you can eat more. Okay, you can eat more, and you can eat for your let's say it says your animal instinct. Okay, but if you do it during the week, it's 
So we it's gonna, it's gonna, it, it, you're gonna, you're gonna have to pay for it. Okay. Yeah, I know. Okay. So, so any, any, any of the world's pleasures that you take out of proportion, too much sleep, too much, you know, too much enjoyment, stuff that you don't, you don't need to do other than your physical needs, then that's, that's what you, you pay for. Okay. But you could pay for it in this world. But what happens is people don't pay for it in this world. They want to live like a good life. So they have to pay for it when they get into the, they get into the ground, okay? But just like a person, this happens to a person's soul and their body, so too the world is comprised of a soul and the body, okay? So everything in this world has, has, um, it's, it's, we see the material, but inside the material there's sparks of holiness, okay? If you, you know, go down and you break thing, everything down, everything is made of, of atoms and inside there's quarks and inside there's lights of energy so even the material has a soul and has a body so that body at the end of six thousand has to be destroyed okay because of the impurities that the sins of men caused into the world mm. so i have a question when you go to the mirza okay you're supposed to be pure yeah mm -hmm. yeah so it's only the week after you went to Migra that you get when you swore before you die or what because if every month you go to the mikvah, you renew yourself. Oh, they fart, they talk yeah, they fart, but even the men last week, he said uh, every time they do kiddush, they, they are pure for the men. Yeah. No, everybody, everybody does kiddush on on uh, Shabbat. Shabbat. Shabbat? It, all their sins get wiped away. Yes. Yeah, but so, you have to understand the difference between sins and, exactly. and taking too much of the world. Oh, so it's not even the same. It's, it's not, not even... sins. We're talking about stuff that you're allowed to do. Okay, you're allowed to eat 15 steaks right now. Okay, you put them, the most kosher steaks in the world right now, put them in front of a person. The person gets full after one steak, after two steaks. The rest of the 13 that he eats, he's going to have to pay for. So is it also a material? Not just is it yes. abusing? Abusing the material, the yes. Abuse. It's abusing the material. The abuse of the really material really causes really your really soul really to become dark. So okay. even, even like being in a big house, it's not good either. Yeah, if you don't use the house for Torah purposes, it's true. Exactly. Listen to what I said. Okay. After you're full. Anything you do after you're full. Okay? I'm never full. Yes. <laughs> No, you don't want to know what it says about people who are never full. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm ready. I want to hear it. <laughs> it says, Tzadik ochel lesova nafsho. A righteous man eats to the satiation of his soul. Beten reshain techsal. The the stomach of evil people will always be lacking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. He eats carbs. Mm -hmm. Carbs make you hungry. Yeah. Him, that's the, yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so, your fault. If you guys turn to page uh, 369 in the, in so the we book, have a question about that. So, if, if a person is sick in this world, a no person food. that suffers in yeah, this no, world, no, 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 no. Um, yeah. does, does, does he have to also go through all this stuff? Well, it depends how much they suffer. Who, what are you talking no, about? Suffer is not a category. Suffer is not a category that encompasses everything. There's some people suffer in money, some people suffer in their body, some people suffer in their soul. Okay, we talked about this. Right. There's different degrees. If he suffered in his soul, didn't suffer in his body. What if he suffered in his body and didn't suffer in his soul? What if, you know what I'm saying? There's different degrees. Suffering is just a general world so what people is suffering like to use. In the soul? Yes. For us, like, uh, so now. What, yeah. what is suffering, suffering the soul now when your kids don't do what you want, when your husband doesn't do what you want, mm -hmm. when uh, people in the street don't do what you want. That's suffering in the soul? When mm -hmm. you can't find something, yeah, when you can't well, find something what? very easily, when you can't, you're, when you're sitting in traffic and you have to wait and you don't want to wait. So it's good? Yes. It's good? Why? Of course. Why? Because you got to be cleansed. That's your cleansing. <laughs> Uh -huh. So marry the bad husband. <laughs> what about suffering in your body? I have my kids. They're keeping up me. No, no. Not, I'm not talking about stop eating. I'm mean, suffering in your body. Like people that are sick. Mm -hmm. No. Well, they probably ate 
um, what they shouldn't have eaten or extra. Or oh, they didn't. And and no, no, they ate prob probably most illness comes from eating. Most of them, ninety nine point nine, come from eating. Okay? So it does, it, listen, you 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 you're not with a person twenty four hours a day, and you see everything they put in their mouth, and and and, 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 and how much they put in their mouth. Okay, that's the problem that he didn't eat a lot and he drank alcohol. That's what happened. Okay, right. Right. alcohol is right. bad food. Right. Yeah. So same thing, same same idea with alcohol, over extending it and too much too much into the physical, so the physical has to come back out. Right, the whole purpose of the persons in this world is to let the soul shine, okay, and stay away from the physical, okay. You can, you're supposed to use the physical, okay, like you make a, a bracha on wine, on bread. You're supposed yes. to eat it, right? You're supposed to use the body to serve God, right? A man puts on tefillin, um, he puts on talit. He uses his body, right? He uses the physical to serve God, okay, but. If you give too much excess to the body, I'm not talking about sins, just extra, for definitely for sins. But if you give too much to the body, too much excess, that has to be taken account for. And people don't understand that, like they get sick, bad things happen to them, you know, tragedies, all sorts of stuff. They don't understand why. Okay, they they just giving too much to the physical. So how is the Torah telling us to eat them to be healthy? Well, could be a, yeah, you're supposed to eat until, not till you're full, you're supposed to eat, fill your stomach two-thirds. Okay, two-thirds every time you, you start eating. And what are we supposed to eat? Do they privilege something in particular? Grains, protein, what? Well, so you, you have to understand that eating is a function of not giving nutrients to your body. That's that's the physical world, That's that's what they speak about. Mm -hmm. But the spiritual world is by eating, we fix the food that was dis, um, drawn down into the material world too much. Okay, so that means everything in the material world has to be fixed, has to be become elevated. Whether it's grains, whether it's vegetables, whether it's fish, whether it's animals, everything has to be uplifted. Okay, even the rocks and the minerals have to be uplifted. We uplifted through our mouth. Okay. Eating is a small part of it. There's still also blessing. There's still praying, right? There's there's different levels. But as soon as you put it in your mouth, you're already taking it up a notch, up a level. Okay. When you when you bless, when you pray, when you when you learn Torah with your mouth, you're taking it up another level. Okay. So people don't really do that. They eat for pleasure. Most of the world, most of the restaurants in the world are not there to feed you, to satiate you. They're there to give you pleasure. Yes. And the world is in love with pleasures. Yes. Okay? And the world is in love with going out to restaurants and, yes. you know, doing all that kind of stuff. And what they don't realize is that they're bringing evil upon themselves. It's, it says, Shomer pivo lechono, Shomer mitzavot nafsho. A person who keeps his mouth and his um, uh, tongue will be spared from the um, troubles of his soul. Okay? Now, it's also evil speech, but it's also, you know, eating too much, eating the wrong things, eating at improper times, all that kind of Not stuff. making bracha. Not making a bracha, exactly. Okay? But the world has become so physical that eating is for pleasure, taking vacations is for pleasure, mm. right? Everything is, is for the pleasure of a person. Mm. Instead of becoming holy and using the world for what it's really meant to be. The whole world is meant to be like a place of hide and seek between you and God. Okay? If you see that, then you use the world for that. That's the whole purpose of the Torah. The Torah is supposed to teach you to, in a, a, a way to act and a way to think, so you use the world properly. Most people's suffering is because they use the world improperly. And it could, it could be that they use it properly for the most part, meaning like they keep the Torah mitzvot, but they don't keep it perfectly according to the design that was um, implemented. Okay? So when you go to Mexico... Right, so like right, let's say you go on vacation, vacation, right? If you go on vacation and say, hey, you know, there's a place called Mexico. I've never seen it. There's, 
you know, there's a different views that you can you can look and, and marvel at the beauty of the creator, the different creatures over there I've never seen, different foods I never Man. tasted. Okay, you go there to experience God in that place, that's, that's okay. perfect. That that becomes a mitzvah, yeah. right? That becomes an actual like act of sanctifying God's name, drawing down light and doing good. But if you go there, oh, I just want to relax and oh, it's so much fun over there. I don't have to think about what anything beach, and just close my mind off. Forget about it. As far as the beach, guys should not be going to the beach uh, unless it's a separate beach. OK, because if men are there, there's probably women there and they're not dressed properly. OK, um, I, had a, I had a rabbi once and his, his, his student told him, hey, rabbi, why can't my wife go to the beach? What's the problem with her going to the beach and wearing like a bikini? So like the next, he didn't answer him. He didn't answer him. The next day he, he said to, you know, they, they were learning in, in the student's house. And he said, the rabbi said to the student, he said, hey, do you mind if your wife comes down in her bra and panties, does a little like twirl for us? <laughs> The, yo, yo. The, the, the student was in shock. You're a rabbi. How are you talking? This is this is the way you That's talk. So What's good. the matter with you? He said to him. He said, "Yeah, but doesn't she do that? Doesn't she do that when she goes to the beach? Right? What's the difference? She doesn't know anyone. What is the difference? Even if she knows someone, everyone is it's the same it. thing. The it's the same thing. Everybody's doing it, so it's fine." But if I do it in my house, it's not fine. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. If the rabbi saw her on the, the beach that, or he saw her in, in the house, it's not the same thing, okay? <laughs> so people have to realize I'm what's sure going on, okay? So so yeah, going to the beach, yeah, if he wants to go at five in the morning when nobody's there, you know, you know, he wants to go do a mikveh, that's fine. But you know, have to realize. And also the women. Women, how are you going into the beach? You going there with like fully clothed or are you going there showing skin? I love Israel for this. Is my okay. separate beach. Right. I In Israel, them. you have yeah. separate beaches. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Yeah. Men, yeah. And women, I'm going. men and women, separate times or separate yeah. actual but beaches. Everywhere. Yeah, Netanya, Batyam, Ashdod, Tel Aviv. The very the very at the same time as a man. What if the woman goes to the beach, let's say here, and and she's properly dressed? It's still not. Yeah, if she's probably it's still not the best, but yeah, it's fine. I mean, because she's properly dressed. Okay, looking at men. No, but ah, we're not. Also, no, not looking at men. Exactly. Exactly. It's just more magnified when you talk about women, because like in society, men could, you know, men walk around without their shirt, and it's it's like a fashion statement. If a woman walked around without her shirt, it's nakedness. It's the same thing. So it's easier to talk about women and to to, to prove a point as opposed to talk about men. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so go turn, turn to page 369. Enough for the fun, enough for the games. <laughs> okay, page 369. Okay, if you guys want me to read in Hebrew, I can read in Hebrew and no, translate, no, no. or yeah, okay, but then, okay. 369, okay? And everybody watching at home, it's, no. uh, the book is The Way of God, and uh, we're in, in the back uh, <laughs> in the back of the book, there's an essay on fundamentals, and it's on page 369, okay, you ready? Okay, if, if you see, it's, this, is, this is like uh, bringing together everything we've been saying, everything we've been saying all this time about Torah and Mitzvot, okay? Yes. So Torah and Commandments. The main point of creation was that God wanted to create man who would then have the task of attaching himself to God, thus to enjoy his true good. Okay, the whole purpose of this world, okay, the food, the luxuries, whatever is in here, is that God wanted to have a place for a person to attach himself to God. Okay, and by doing so, getting good. Okay? God wants us to have good, but he wants us to do this. This is accomplished through the fact that man has two ways before him. One being good and the other evil. Okay, You have to have two, two paths. A path of good and a path of evil. And then 
a man is placed in the middle, he can choose whatever he wants. If he chooses evil, it's away from God, and he's not going to get good. If it's good, obviously it's towards God, and he is going to get good. Okay? And a man has the power to choose whichever he desires. When through his own free will and knowledge he chooses good and rejects evil, then this true everlasting good is given him. Okay? That's that's for sure. It's not like a boss. You don't know if the boss will pay you at the end of the month or he won't pay at the end of the month. Right? At the end of the day, he won't pay at the end of the day. Okay? God's company doesn't run out of money to pay a person. Right? We're not talking about money. We're talking about, obviously, pleasure. Okay? All other things were created only because the highest wisdom deemed them necessary in order for the universe to be complete. Okay, so everything in, in the universe, the sun, the moon, the mountains, the rivers, the lakes, the foods, the, the animals, the creatures, everything is because God decided that it's necessary for everything to be complete. Man's mission, right? To, to choose good. So the man could exist in a state mentioned above between the good and evil where he could serve God and thus attain true good. Okay? The whole world is designed as a, not a playground, a playing field, like a football field, right? There's good and there's evil, there's lines, there's out of bounds, there's fouls, there's all that stuff. And the purpose is to score the points, to win the game, to go get the trophy, to go get the prize. Mm -hmm. That's it. Pollution and all that is all... Everything's part of it. Okay? The pollution. Everything. Everything in the world is Planet part of the design. Up, is... If you remember how the world was designed, how the world was created, is that God drew away his light and then put it back in. Mm -hmm. So everything in the world is by design supposed to be in the world. Nothing is accidental. This is what people who, particularly the people on the left, the leftists, left in, in, in Judaism is the evil, is the side of evil. The people who went away from God want us to focus on the physical and the material world. Okay, they want you to like worry about it, to discuss it, to have mm -hmm. all all your days yeah. like fixated upon it, right? Recycle, if we do this, you know, then this will happen. Yeah, if we recycle, that will happen. If it does, listen. At the end of the day, there's only 220 more years to, to go. They're talking about oh, the world won't be here in a thousand years if we don't recycle. Don't worry, it's not going to be here in 220 years. Okay, but because they don't know this, they start like you know conjuring things up in their head because they've distanced themselves from God, so they make you worry about things that are not relevant to your life at all okay of course we do not know every single thing in the world was necessary okay we don't know why sorry everything in the world is necessary okay because we're not like geniuses you know why does this speck of dust have to be here at this time all right and this day but what we do know from our sages is that the main element in all creation is man Okay, like the central figure, the central actor of this movie called the world, history, right? I had a rabbi say history is his story, God's story, all right? Um, so, but the main actor in all this business is man, okay, as a person. And all the other things were created only for his sake. Everything was created for man. And therefore, that the main purpose in man's creation was for him to attain the true good. Okay, the central figure, save the whale, save the tiger, save the giraffes, it's all, all that stuff. It's all part of the plan. Stay away from it. The whole purpose the is man. The dinosaurs too. Save man. Yeah, the dinosaurs, these guys, the petroleum, the fuel, the, forget about it. They just drive you crazy, okay? Because they don't know what the purpose of the world is. So they make up things, mm. okay? We need to save the children. We need to save the whales. We see, need to save this. We need to save you that. You don't even look at the news. Either. There's no. Well, the, I mean, you can look at the news to see. This, the, the, if you have a good perspective of the world, then you look at the news as, as it, yeah. not, the real news, not like the commentary on stuff. Just exactly what happened. You see God guiding ah, the world. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Right. You look at even sporting events. Who who wanted that team to win? Like the plane, the plane in Iran. The, the plane in Iran, the, the plane in, in JFK right now landing. Everything. When you look at the world, you're watching God in action. Why the plane? Okay. That was... You're watching God in action. It's all part of the plan. Okay. So you can look at that stuff and be wowed by it. 
see God in action and, and like draw yourself closer to him and love it and say, yes, this is what I want. This is part of the plan. Even, even the bad, right? The good and the bad. You're just looking at it and enjoying what God is doing. Like a movie, okay? <clears throat> if you do it like that, then yeah, all that stuff is great. Watching the news is good. Watching sports is good. Because you're watching God in action. Okay? The Gemara says, even if you see uh, a non-Jewish king coming down the street, you should do whatever you can to go around and see him. Okay, why? Because you see what kingship is. And when the king and Messiah comes, the Mashiach comes, you'll be able to differentiate between those kings and the real godly king. Okay, so depending on so, how you think. Exactly. It's, it's all depending on how you think. It's, it's all about your perspective. And that's why the Torah is so perfect. It's so great because you have God's perspective in the world. Okay, otherwise you're looking at human brains. What perspective? The perspective you grew up watching cartoons? That perspective you see the world? All right, a person didn't watch cartoons, so he watched sports. So he sees the world through sports. A person was in business. A person was with drugs and, and rapists and, and craziness, and that's the way he sees the world. It can't be. You have to see it through the designer's... Everything. You have to see it through the designer's eyes. Everything is for the, this purpose, okay? There has to be good. There has to be evil. There has to be man in the middle choosing between good and evil, Okay? However, the highest wisdom perceives that in order for man to attain this good, he must first be tested and pass his test. Okay, so this world is the world of test. Okay, if you remember the, the, the drawings that we drew, the world of work and the world of reward. This world is the world of test. People don't understand this. So they ask, why did this happen? How come this? How come that? You know, they cry about the story of the world, but they don't understand the story of the world. If you understood the story of the world, it has to happen. It has to be this way. Okay? It's all for the test. This is the physical world, a place where both good and evil exist, and where man could reject evil and choose good. If everything was good, that's not the purpose of the world. Right? So people always want it to be good. Right? But that's not the purpose of the world. The purpose of the world is for man to be tested. Okay? We want good so we can pass the test, so it's easier to pass the test, but good for the sake of good, there's no such thing. That's the next there's world. There's also good and the bad. Yes, but it's all for the next world. Understand? Mm -hmm. The next world is all good. This world is a test world that has good so and evil bad. in it. And it's by design. And it has to be this way for the purpose of the world to and the world to come. Okay? And if a person doesn't understand this, he's just going to give suffering and, and, and bitterness into his, into his soul. It's, 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 it's totally, totally a shame. Totally, totally a shame. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. That, that, that is the purpose of the physical world. No, I accept it. Understand it. Understand it so you accept it anyway. It's not like, oh, I, want it. I don't want it to be this way, but I got to accept it because... No, I want it to be this way because this is the design. This is the purpose of the world. Good. Okay? But when you so when do we know like that? When do no, we know that we have something to do with it or it's all no, something no, because meant to have you understand no, this no, is why I'm no, confused. No, I'm still confused. No, I'm still confused. No, yeah, I know. It's both at the same time. But when do we it, it, no matter what we do, is that what's that's yeah, what that's what God wanted. That's what God wanted. Yeah. What whatever we do, it is, what it, where you work, where you don't work, what what you, exactly. What whatever do, what happens, you, whatever happens in the six thousand years is exactly what God wanted to happen in those six thousand years. If you're religious, you're not religious. You are, everything. You're, 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 if I raise my hand just now, that's what God wanted. Helped, this, if I spoke these words, that's what God wanted. Okay. Yeah, don't confuse so yourself. Don't don't feel God bad wants about anything. Us to speak. To to say that so why because there has us, to be good. There has to be evil. Guys, 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 guys. There has to be good and there has to be evil. There has to be a thing called the Shonara. There has to be people speaking it for it to even be a test. If there weren't anybody speaking it, there'd be no test. Okay? A person has to think. It says, everybody has to say, Vishulini For me, the world was created. You're not supposed to look at other people's lives. You're supposed to look at your life. Okay? My friend, my best friend is talking evil right now. Oh, he was created for me. I'm not mm. supposed to speak evil. Okay? Did God want him to speak evil? Yes, God was speaking evil. Because okay. the world's created for me. I'm not looking at it through his eyes, through through my friend's eyes, or God's eyes. I'm looking at it through my eyes. Do you ignore it or do you say something? 
What's well, your job? If the, if the, again, if the friend is going to listen to you, if the friend is a person who's smart and wants to better himself, then yeah, of course so you have you a mitzvah to say something. it's because that's what Hashem wanted? Yes, and if you don't say something, it's what Hashem wanted. And everything that happens for the 6,000 years is exactly what God wanted. You have to repeat it every single day of every moment of your life. Otherwise, you're going to be confused. Oh, God didn't really want it to happen. And How did this happen? How can it go against His will? How could He let this happen? How could this tragedy happen? You're going to confuse yourself. Everything that happened is exactly what God wanted to happen. That's it. Your life is perfect. You got to this point. You got you, anyway, you got to this point because God wanted you to get this point. You got to this class because God wanted so you to get no this class. So there's no regret. I should exactly. have married this guy. I should have exactly. uh, done the this. Only I should thing, have 10 kids. The I should have had one kid. What's the only thing a person's supposed to regret? Uh, like, exactly what? right. What? Not like having, Chubano, not having come close to God. Yeah, sooner. but that's also Hashem's. Exactly, but you have to, you to have to regret. think, you have to regret it, right? So because God like commanded you to regret not being close to Him, okay. not doing the commandments. Okay. okay, that's part of tshuva. That's the mitzvah of tshuva to regret that. But everything else, oh, I went to this college, I didn't go to that college, I met this person, I didn't met that, that person. I told that to my daughter, I said, you know what, don't worry about the colleges, you know, I sh you're going to go where Ashley wants you to go. Exactly. <laughs> so I told her. Exactly. She was stressed. I said, don't worry. Exactly. If anybody, yeah, if anybody, if anybody watched, it, so. if anybody watched the elections, uh, the previous elections, I happened to be in Israel at the time. No, I happened to be in Israel at the time. Listen all the way. Um, the election when Obama got elected the first time. If you saw the election three weeks before the election, there was no chance Obama was going to be elected. Yeah, it was uh, McCain was yeah. ahead by ten points, yeah. which was impossible to make up. <laughs> three weeks before the election, the stock market goes down, destroyed. I know. Obama goes all the way up and. And and, 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 and and that's it. It's a it's an end. Okay, yeah. hang on. Hang on yeah. Relax. Relax. Listen all the way. Okay. Everything got switched. God says, "Lia kesef zav." Money is mine, right? I control the money. Okay. If a person looks at it and sees it, he sees everything. Boom. God did everything. Exactly how it's supposed to be. If we look with our human we'll mind, we'll never see this. Yeah, we'll go crazy. We'll commit suicide. Right? We'll go crazy. Okay, if you see it through God's eyes, you see that the world is run perfectly as He wants it. Okay. What we have to say, if we did something, then He caused us to say. Because when you were doing it, you didn't think, "Hey, God, you're doing it." You thought you were doing it, and for that thought that you were doing it, you have to regret it. But now I'm always thinking, "Okay, well, He wanted me to do it, but I do something." You know? Okay, so when you sure. do something bad, listen carefully. When you do something bad, he wanted you to do it, but you also wanted to do it. Okay? Now, that he wanted you to do it and so to realize exactly and realize that it was wrong, and then you come back to him. Okay? okay? What happens is when we sin, we go down. Okay, when we go down, we go into the physical. Sometimes the physical has to be fixed, has to be elevated. Okay, so we go down, we drink that coffee, we go to that place, we see those things. And then when you come back up, you take the sparks of that place and you bring them, return them back to God. Okay? But you didn't know. You're like, oh, that place looks so nice. That coffee looks so good, right? You jump into it like with your urges. Okay? So for those urges that you jumped into it, that's what you have to repent. But God wanted it there because there's certain sparks He wants you to uplift from there. Okay? And He wants you to come close to Him and realize what He said is permitted or not permitted. So... Even like chosen people, if we are. Obama was elected, no one opened their mouths, you know? No one said anything. He didn't run once, twice. Now, uh, Trump is elected, everything is bad for us. What's, what's that? It's like... How can God want something against Israel all the time? All it's the time, part all the of time. the plan. Thank it's you. The design. <laughs> Thank like, you. Well, we got one person yeah, here at least that gets the idea. Yeah, but, yeah. It's part of the plan. Don't confuse yourself. It's all right, history. It's always part of the plan. Right. All to, history. To us down to only like Either you believe that this is how the way the world was created, or you don't believe that the world was created. It's much easier to believe that this is the way the world was created. And this is the way God runs the world. It's so much easier. Trust me. You're going to just confuse yourself and you're not you're just going to be upset about everything. What?
What's wrong? Batam did too good for Israel. Okay. I'm going to continue, okay? Yeah, but that's... You guys inside? Okay, let's look inside. Because it's the design for Hashem. The ultimate nature of good and evil is respectively the holiness and corruption, the Tumah, that God plays in the world. Okay, when you do good, you become holy. When you do bad, you draw down Tumah. You draw down impurity. You draw down evil to the world, okay? There's no state being in the middle. <clears throat> I'm religious and not religious. It doesn't matter what you think or what you believe. This is what happens automatically because this is the design of the world. Okay? Holiness is a state of closeness to God while corruption is that which is distant from Him. Okay? You're either coming close or going down. There's nothing else. Holiness is the influence that God grants to one who is fit for it and is a bestowal that abides with him. Okay? Corruption, corruption meaning tuma, e like evil impurity, on the other hand, is a state of separation where God draws away and a state of hiding wherein God conceals himself. Okay? If you remember when Adam sinned, he started hiding. Mm -hmm. So God said, where are you? Right? Yeah. And he said, oh, I was hiding because I sinned. You know, like, what was he hiding from? Where did he think God was? Why did he ask you where are you? Where did he think God was? Forget what God said. But why did Adam think that God is somewhere and I can hide from him? Where is it? Who does he think God is? You see that the sin conceals God. Okay? It causes the person to become blind. Okay? The more you you live in sin, the less you Exactly. The more you live in sin, the less you see God. Exactly. Now you're talking, okay? So people say, oh, show me him, show me, show me him. You, you're, you're acting okay. like Adam when he sinned, as if like God is someplace. Instead of him being in self and being everywhere, he's someplace. Okay? Someplace distant from him. Okay? So this is what sin does. And since the world right now is sinning a lot, they the world is that. becoming more and more and more secular. Yeah. Okay? And, and, and distancing himself away. The truth, however, is that God created spiritual forces especially for this purpose. It is from these forces that darkness and <coughs> pollution, pollution, zuama, is like, meaning not pollution, the air pollution, meaning pollution of, of impurity, emanate, okay, from these angels. Wherever such pollution exists, holiness draws away and God's light hides itself. These forces are known as the forces of corruption. Kohotatuma. Okay, there's forces of evil and corruption in the world. Okay, some people say, Oh, everything's good, everything's fine, everything's holy. No, 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 no. There's forces of good and there's forces of evil. There's a purpose, there's a design for the world. You just have to understand it. Okay, God gave man the ability to motivate the highest roots through his deeds. Meaning, remember, man is here in this world, but he's really connected to all the worlds. Remember the four levels of the worlds that when he does something here, he draws down light, or when he does something bad here, he draws down darkness and the opposite. Man's deeds can therefore draw sustenance from God's holiness and the light of his good. On the other hand, they can also transmit pollution and corruption. Okay? So a person is either drawing good or drawing bad. Alright? We know for sure that the, um, if you look, look, look in the book, the sins draw bad, mitzvot, Commandments draw good, but also material, staying away from the material draws good and coming closer to the material draws bad. Also person's character traits, person's character traits, the better he fixes his character traits, the more he draws good, the more he becomes like an animal and angry and bad character traits, he's drawing bad. Okay. God specifies certain deeds through which holiness is transmitted and commanded us to keep them. Okay? There's certain things that that's what they do. That's their nature. These include all the commandments that we are required to obey. On the other hand, he also specifies certain deeds that bring about pollution and commanded us to abstain from them. These include all the things that are forbidden. Okay? That's 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 what the Torah is telling us. The Torah is telling us, oh, it's not it's not like a circus. Do this and don't do that, and I'll punish you and I'll reward you. It's not like it's not like that. The actual acts are having an effect in the world. 
okay? There is only one true good, however, that is attachment to God, okay? Good, when we define good, is attached to God. We define bad as distance from God. That's all there is, okay? People always say this and that and all that stuff. Good is only attraction to him. We have already explained that the commandments are means which transmit the emanations of God holiness and the light of his good. These commandments are therefore the means through which true good can be achieved. The individual who sanctifies himself to a great degree with the emanation of God's holiness becomes fitting to be attached to him and enjoys true good. Okay, The people who cleanse themselves through these commandments, they become fit to stick to God, right? It's like two pieces of glue, okay? God is glue, and a person has glue on him too. If he does commandments, so he cleans this place, so the glue could stick together. But if he dirties this place, so anybody knows anything about glue, it can't stick to surfaces if it's dirty, okay? So a person has to constantly um, attach themselves by doing the commandments, okay? On the other hand, the person who corrupts himself with the pollution that we have mentioned becomes unfit to attach himself to God and therefore cast away from him. Okay? People are distanced from him. There are, however, many levels with regard to the emanation of both holiness and the pollution that we have discussed. Right? There's levels to this. It's not yes or no. Right? Some people think, oh, he's religious, he's close. He's not religious, he's not. Okay? There's levels. There's a story in the Zohar that Avram, God told him at the age of uh, 86, he's going to have a child. Okay, he did. He had Ishmael. Okay, but he didn't have Yitzchak with Sarah until the age of 100. Zohar says he wasn't yet fitting. He didn't reach the level where Yitzchak, the, the, the holy soul, can come down through him. So you see, well, at the age of 86, he was holy. Right? He was always constantly talking about God, drawing people to God, you know, going around the world, spreading his message. But at the age of 100, he was holier. Right? So it's fitting to have Yitzchak as, as his son. Okay? So you see there's levels to this. This is likewise true of that the good that is attained through good deeds, as well as the state of being cast away from God as a result of evil deeds. These levels are responsible for the differences that will exist between various individuals with regard to true excellence, as we shall explain shortly. Like in the next world, we're not going to be on the same level. You did more, you're closer. You did less, you're further. You did better, you're closer. You did less good, you're further, right? Yeah, but if you say well, everybody's you on their close, level. Everybody's going to be on the same level. No, we never said everybody's going to be on the same level. Everybody's going to be on their own individual level. level. But everybody's going to be doing the same thing. Okay, everybody's like, let's say right now, not the whole world likes football, you know, only America. Imagine the whole world loves football, but still okay? not on the same level, right? Everyone, everyone's gonna love on a different level, okay? Same thing, a person's gonna draw closer or further according to their different levels, okay? It's also necessary to realize that just as man was given the power to have both holiness and pollution transmitted to himself. So was he given the ability to have holiness and pollution transmitted to all creation through his deeds. You understand? So it's not like I'm just drawing it to myself. Drawing okay. it to the coffee, to the table, to the camera, to the bookshelf, to, to the sweater. To I'm exact to my house. Yeah. People, bad things happen in people's houses all the time. They just don't know why. They think, oh, well, it was a must have been electrical circuit. That's why there was yeah. fire. The, the Gemara says, the Gemara says, if there was fire there, there wasn't words of Torah there. And also okay? Shabbat, so the, Shabbat uh, And also Shabbat, right, right. So things don't just happen. Things don't just break, okay? A person either draws down holiness or impurity onto the physical world, okay? Okay. Therefore, right, therefore, all creation can either be rectified or damaged spiritually because of man. Okay? It's our fault. Things are bad. Not because... We didn't come up with the technology to fix it. Not because we didn't recycle. Not because we didn't, okay? It's because of the sins, they draw down negativity into the world. It's like, uh, if you burn a house, all these seven kids, sorry, that passed uh, in the house, you know, Jewish, I mean, religious family, 
מול חנוכה, בכזה בפלטה, בכ... Yeah, it wasn't because of the plata. אוקיי? Okay, before they came into this world. All, they, the, all of them, the, all siblings. Yeah, it could, could be that. Usually siblings and parents, they're coming from the same root soul. So, okay. Um, so it could have been that. Um, and it could have been, since all Am Yisrael is connected, it could have been they were suffering for other people. Okay. Am Yisrael, yeah, all of, all of Israel is connected one to another. So, you know, if one person sins, another person has to pay for it. If one person does a mitzvah, another person gets rewarded for yeah. it. Okay, we're all connected. We're one all team. Part. It's all part of the plan. Six thousand years, Hashem all part of the plan. These it's these not that he. It, were gonna come for no, five, six, it's, years. it's not that he knew. He did it. Yeah. That's so it. When he he did it. He did it. He brought these souls down. He did it. He, he did it. <laughs> Forget new. It's also, he it's did also it. what he, happened with the three he boys. He did. He does, and he will do everything that happened. It's also what happened so with you the three not, boys. So you should not cry over these people. Yeah. No, you could be sad because God is showing you something. Yeah. What's God showing you? Something, uh, something's something not good. You're, yeah. You got to fix yourself. You got to do better. So it's right? also because it's, it's a made. message. Okay. It's a message. God's constantly talking to us, right? It's a message. Oy. Okay. So it's, it's not also, sad for the sake of being sad. Were you happy when they were keeping Shabbat? When they were eating uh, gefilte fish? Were you happy? We're like, yes. Oh man, there's another. Family over there keeping uh, Shabbat and eating a filter fish. You didn't care, right? So you heard a sad story. Boy, you're sad because it's a sad story, right? It's but you, but you don't, you're not happy when there's a happy story, right? So so you have to be sad that God is, had to bring He's something bad to give us a bit. message. Something's not going good here. We have to fix something. <laughs> okay? <laughs> On that, that you should be sad because there's evil, not enough goodness in the world So evil has to manifest in the physical world. And also okay? what happened with the three boys? They found, all the bad stories uh, in the world. They, all the bad stories. They, they found the tunnels. All the bad stories are the same thing. All the good stories are the same thing. The light draws down goodness. The, the lack of light draws down badness. It's, it's much easier. Trust me. It's much easier to think this way. Yeah, but... And it's the truth. It's not just easier. It's just so one thing for the other. Yes. So we're basically, all what we we're said, one team. Can I connect something to what I said before? If we, if it's all connected, and Hashem wants everything to be like, like other people, other people like from the I'm saying, I'm not saying nobody perfect has a shalom. Like I'm not saying like, a, but if other people are doing something wrong and you confront them, it's mean that you should confront them because it couldn't influence the other people as bad as you know he, he can. Hurt other people. Yeah, obviously yeah. you have a so commandment. You can, yeah. Obviously you have a commandment to so do it. So you can confront yeah. them. Like at least, yeah. at least don't don't lose that don't lose that the, the right. Jewish but, nation. But here's a here's a problem. Not everybody knows what you just learned. Nahon. So they confront them, and and the other person senses. It says, "Kemayma panim panim can leva adam la adam." Just like waters are, 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 are of a face is, you can see the reflection in waters. So do people's hearts. Okay. They reflect one another. Okay. So, so a person, you come at a person and you're yelling at them because you want them to keep, mm. but just because you want to keep them to keep, to be like you, they feel your heart. They feel it's not real. Mm. So they get mad at you too. Mm -hmm. Okay? But if your heart is clear and genuine, right? It says, Anybody who has real awe of God, whatever he says, people will accept it because that's what's in his heart. His heart's clean and they could, they could reflect the heart. They feel his heart. Okay, so it I mean, obviously it depends on the person's heart, what they're doing it for. That's the success <laughs> where they were to have it. Sure, there's a commandment to do it. You, you could okay? pray in yourself also for pray, them. Also pray, right. You, you could know, do a lot of things. Instead of, because some people don't take it right, especially. Well, especially if you don't bring it right, right? If you say out of love, you no, say like, no, hey, no, I love it's you. Just a I want I want you to know, I want you to know what's in this book. I want you to know these things. There's, you know. If, then, then they'll, they'll accept it. But you just tell them, oh, you're supposed to do that or else uh, bad things are going to happen. Most people are not going to be kind to that. 
but you never know. Like she said, she didn't Some like people need to beat up to wake up. Some <coughs> needs to hear it. Whatever God wants. Okay. All right. Now the manner in which, um, the manner in which man's deeds transmit these influences, okay, is through the above mentioned power of parallelism that exists between the entities below in the physical world and the highest forces. Remember, we said what's up top is also what's down here. The light is coming down through the different worlds and then comes here. So that means whatever's here is also up there. Okay? So if down here we do bad, up there draws down bad. If down here we do good, up there is good. Okay? Whenever something physical is moved, a certain motivation reaches its counterpart, force on high. So if I raise my hand, there's a hand up there and the upper world's also raising their hand, right? If I tilt the cap up there, there's a tilted cap. Everything that happens here is what's happening there. Now you can also see if some uh, sporting events happen here, it's also happening there. So you understand everything's from God, right? That force then brings about the transmission of a particular influence, okay? Meaning like what you do here draws down back. If a particular deed involves the fulfillment of the divine commandment, then this will strengthen its counterpart force. And as a result, an influence of holiness will be transmitted from God following the nature of this particular motivation. If on the other hand, the particular deed is among those which must be avoided, right? The negative commandments. It will cause a blemish in its counterpart force on high, according to the particular nature of the misdeed. This in turn causes God's light to conceal itself and retract. So who's doing everything? God. Thank you. Okay. In its place, one of the forces of corruption is motivated exactly opposite to the influence that has been concealed. Okay, everything in the world has a counterpart up there. So the mitzvah of chala has something up there. The mitzvah of tzedakah has something up there, right? Whatever you do here has a different force. Chala is one force, tefillin is one force, tzedakah is one force, Shabbat candles are one force. Everything is a different light that's coming down, okay? So you can't say, oh, that person's religious, he's good. That person's not religious, he's bad. Every light has its specific thing that it's doing, okay? That's what we should try, try to do as much as we can. Okay? This transmits pollution according to the particular motivation question. Now, <coughs> repentance removes the blemish in precisely the same manner. Okay? When a person does tshuva, he takes away the, the block that he brought down. Okay? When a person repents, he takes away the block and he brings down the good light. Power to act is taken away from the particular force of corruption that parallels the sin, and therefore the influence of holiness is brought back and appropriately transmitted. Okay? So when you do tshuva, you stop the, the, the darkness and you bring back the, the light. Again, Mashiach, what's he going to do? He's going to get everyone to repent and draw down this light, right? And when the light is drawn down, everybody's going to recognize God and everything. That's the whole purpose of creation. At the end of 6,000 years, everybody's going to recognize God and know that he was the one doing everything. Remember his story. And everybody's going to go to the next world and get the reward for it. Okay? That's the whole purpose of creation. That's the purpose of our lives. That's the, the, the real reason behind why everything happens in the world for the reason it does. It's because of this. And if you know it, you can have fun. If you don't know it, yeah. you're just going to have questions and just have doubts and suffering. Okay? Yes. Have a good night. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, all the good stuff. Thank you guys.